In this section, we will look at some discrete probability distributions. This is where we combine descriptive statistics with probability. Probability distributions will describe what probably will happen, not what will happen. We will construct probability distributions by presenting possible outcomes along with relative frequencies we expect. A random variable is a variable that has single numeric value for each outcome of a procedure. A probability distribution describes the probability of each random variable. Individual probabilities must be from 0 to 1. The sum of the probabilities must be equal to 1, but 0.99 or 1.01 are acceptable due to rounding errors. An example of a probability distribution. Some examples of not probability distributions. If a probability is very small, we represent it with a 0 plus. A probability of 0 represents an impossible event, and a probability of 1 represents a certain event. A discrete random variable has either a finite countable number of values. A continuous random variable has infinitely many values, and those values can be associated with measurements on a continuous scale without gaps of interruptions. Now let's do an example. Here we have a probability distribution for tossing a coin three times. Let's create a probability histogram to get a visual of what this looks like. Here we can better see what the distribution looks like. A probability histogram can provide insight into the distribution of random variables. The mean for the probability distribution is known as the expected value. The variance and standard deviation measure the variation of the random variable. The mean, variance, and standard deviation can be found using the following formulas. Typically, we will round the mean, variance, and standard deviation to one more decimal place than the random variable.
Notice we are using the notation for population for probability because these are the theoretical values for the population, not based from a frequency from a sample. Now we will use the TI-83 to find the mean and variance. First, we need to enter the probability distributions by entering our, li our list section in the calculator. After turning the calculator on, press second, then stat, then make sure the edit selection is highlighted and press enter. Then enter the random variable into L1 and probabilities into L2. Now we use L3 to get our mean by entering L1 times L2 into L3, as shown on the calculator here. Now to find the mean, we need to sum up L3. So hit the second button, then press the stat button and scroll to the math option. Scroll down to the sum option and hit enter. Then select L3 by hitting second and the number 3 on the calculator. And we get the mean or expected value is 1.5. Now we enter 1.5 into L4 on the calculator. Now we enter the formula for variance into L5. Now we sum up L5 to get the variance. Again, we hit the second button and hit stat, then scroll to math, and scroll down to the sum option and hit enter. Now hit second and the number 5 to sum up L5. And we get 0 0.75 for the variance. To get population standard deviation, we take the square root of 0.75.
Using our rounding rules, we get 0.9. Now let's do another example to find the usual number of heads that will occur when we cost, toss a coin six times. So again, we will use the calculator to find the mean, variance, and standard deviation. Again, we start entering on the random variable for L1 and the probabilities for L2. Let's make sure all the probabilities add up to one real quick. Yes. Now we enter the mean formula for L3, which is L1 times L2. So population mean or expected value is 3. Now we enter that into L4.
Now we enter the variance formula into L5 on the calculator. Now sum up L5 to get the variance. We get 1.5 for the population variance. To get the standard deviation, we square root the variance and get Now we can find the range of usual values. Remember minimum usual value is two standard deviations below the mean. And the maximum usual value is two standard deviations above the mean. So the range of usual values is between 0 0.6 heads and 5.4 heads. Let's go over the rare event rule real quick. Unusually high number of successes is where the probability is less than or equal to 5%. Unusually low number of successes is where the probability is 5% or less. Now let's analyze the tossing coin six times problem some more.
probability of getting exactly five heads is 0 0.09375 or 9.4 percent chance. probability of getting five or more heads, we will need to look at exactly five heads or exactly six heads. which equals 0 0.1094, or about 11% chance. Which probability is best for seeing if five heads is unusually high? Five heads is not unusually high since it is greater than 5%. Getting no heads is unusually low amount of heads since the probability is less than 5%. And getting exactly six heads would be unusually high since probability is less than 5%. Here is some more information on expected value, which is the mean of the probability distribution. Another example, here's a nice example on predicting probability of getting a certain job after so many interviews. This is a probability distribution since it all adds up to 0.99, which is close enough to 1.00. Finding the mean or expected value, we sum up the third column. Yay, it's already done for us. This means you might expect to have 2.85 interviews. Now we want the range of usual amount of interviews, so we need the standard deviation too. So we add up the last column, which is already done for us, and take the square root to get the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is 1.2.
Now we can find the minimum usual value by taking away two standard deviations from the mean. And finding the maximum usual value, we add two standard deviations to the mean. So the range of usual interviews will be between 0 0.45 and 5.25 interviews. Not unusual to get a decision after one interview since probability is higher than 5%.